Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. Welcome back to the Past This Prime YouTube channel and welcome back to another guide where we are looking at a guide for surviving the aftermath. And in this guide, we're just going to do a discussion about the world map. So in a previous guide, I talked about the specialists themselves and now we're just going to cover off just some basics of the world map. All right, so this is obviously our colony view here. And down here, we have the world map, which we can enter by clicking here or pressing M. And we can do that, right? We can get in here, uh, WASD to move around, or depending on what platform you're on. If you're on a console, it may work entirely differently. But you can see here, this is where our town is, and we have a few items around, and uh, a lot of fog and some dark ones that are visible but not open. Now, yep. with our specialists, our specialists are the only ones that can go to the world map. But you'll see here, it is grayed out at the start of a match, and that is because we need to build the gate. So that is the first step if you want to get to the world map. Uh, you have to build this gate, which is going to take a fair bit of resources which is obviously hard to do if you don't have them. Uh, so that's the challenge of the first part of the game is getting that gate open. So let's now switch over to a game where we have the gate on and the world map open. All right, so now we are in a colony that has a gate and we can go to the world map and we have some specialists out here and you can see we have done a little bit of scouting and got a few various things opened and whatever else. So the world map itself is locked up into these little sectors, right? With these lines around it, whether they're dotted or whatever else. When they look like this, that means you have opened them up, you've scouted them, you can see what's in them. When they look like this, you have not. Right? You can't see what's inside, you just get an idea of what's there. And obviously here you haven't even got close to it. Uh, they're generally fogged out if you haven't seen the one before it. So, that's quite simple. So, what do we actually do out here, right? Because we obviously send our specialists out here. And the main thing is, is a lot of scavenging, uh, building outposts, and finding other towns, right? There's usually... A I can't remember how many there is, four or five, something like that, other civilizations that are out there in various places. And we also do quests as well. I forgot that this one here even has a quest right now. Okay, so when you first get out here, you'll probably only have one little square open where your town is, wherever that is. Uh, if you're playing on PC, you can press C to get back to the middle, to your town. And here's your specialist. So when you send a specialist, well, we'll do that now. So let's grab a specialist. We have, we have one back in the town here. Now, if I go and click send on the world map and we get the game playing a little bit, we'll eventually see a pop-up. Well, we should see a pop-up. Got to wait for her to run down. Where is she? Is that her? No. Okay, so now we got a pop up specialist ready for action. Go to the world map. We go to the world map, and there she is, just standing in the middle of our yep. our center here. And we can click on her. We can see whatever she's holding, which is just anything she's scavenged in the world map for now, because you don't have to go back to the colony straight away you can go and scavenge multiple items and fill up you can see your current health uh, if you get into fights etc and then we can move around so when we're moving around we just get this little thing of a bob here uh, if it's yellow and it's a one that means we can move there directly in this turn and anything beyond there is showing sort of how many days it's going to take to get there Okay, so if I want to move, I just find a spot I want to go to, and uh, where do we want to go? Let's, let's just 
point somewhere down here, for instance. Okay. And I just right click and bang with there. Now, obviously, I can queue up multiple moves, but they won't get there. They'll take you so many days yep. to do that. Now, while we're out here, we'll find various things. And uh, here we have some scavenging type things. So we have two types here. We have this one here, which looks like a cog. And you'll have a research item in there. Or you'll have some sort of uh, other item. I have nothing here to show that. We'll show that in another map. Um, yeah, well, I'll show you more of these in uh, a different playthrough. But these ones here, you cannot go and scavenge, okay? So it basically says it there that you need to build a research outpost into the sector to get access to the knowledge it holds. So to get anything in the cogs, you need to build an outpost. These ones here without the cogs, that are just this gold circle here, you can manually go to and mine. Now you'll see... She's already listed as a two here, so she must have already moved to get to this spot. Not gonna work. But when we go over it, we turn into a uh, crowbar here, Sorry, and we can right click on it. Now you can see in the middle section, when I'm hovering on it, I can't move the mouse to point it out, but you've got the specialist stats on the left, you've got uh, some information in the middle, it's sort of, it's telling you the time, the time is how long it's going to take for this specialist to scavenge all of the resources in this um, building or item or whatever it is. Depending on your skills will depend on what that time is. You know, uh, people with high scavenging will be quicker than others and that sort of thing. So it depends what you're scavenging and depends on your statistics there. The rate is what you're going to get and how long it's going to take. So it's going to take 26, sorry, it's going to take 12 hours to get 26 candy bars. And there is, when you look on the right, it shows you how much is there and what type of building it is. So it's decaying houses and there is 55 of 55 candy bars. Now the reason it has 55, 55 is because you can come back multiple times if you want to send your specialist to a little bit and disappear you can so you'll get 26 every 12 hours so in theory you'll almost finish it in one day right that's basically the math obviously it says they're one day one hour that's that little bit extra then you've got a hazard thing there and in this case here it's not hazardous it's zero damage per 12 hours so your specialist will not incur any damage by scavenging this building or this decaying houses, right? And you can tell because it is just like clear color. But this one here that has like the radiation poison type effect on it, if I highlight that, you'll see that it has a damage of five damage per 12 hours. So you need to factor that in when you're doing it, that you need to look at her health 75 out of 100 HP. She's going to take two days and 13 hours to scavenge this. Then, you know, you can do some math and work out, well, that's uh, five damage per 12 hours. That's 10 per day. So she's going to lose 20 for two days. And then, you know, let's just round it down to 12 hours instead of 13 and another five damage. So she's going to lose 25 HP uh, to scavenge this. So she will survive, she'll drop down to 50, right? So she's not gonna kill her. And we'll get 31 antibiotics. So that's what all that means. So as I said, you can right click there and get her to start doing that. Yes. Now, the other thing we can do is we've got a couple extra buttons when they've started something back that just takes us out of them. But we can also cancel the mission. So, if there's a reason we think, like for instance, if we had this specialist here working on this damage one uh, and they're getting close to dying, um, we can click yes. on them and go cancel or retreat 
and they will get out of there and you know be uh and not and not die basically um but they'll stop obviously what they're doing so they will leave resources here for somebody else to come back and get the rest of what's up all right now as i said once they are scavenging stuff you can see they get resources now if we look at her you can see she's got uh nine boxes on the side there that's basically her storage of what she can carry and she has already scavenged uh, 30 medicine and 30 whatever they are antibiotics I think they are so she's got some resources that when you have grabbed enough or you're happy or you need them in your colony you basically take her back to the colony so run her back uh, just click on there or click on the return to colony button wait the amount of time that's going to take so for instance here it's going to take three days for her to get back and then when she gets back she'll automatically just walk through the gate dump the materials here somewhere around here they just dump them near the gate and then your carriers will come and pick them up and put them in storage and she will come back and just wander around your colony doing what they do normally uh, including healing so the other thing which we can see this guy doing right now is that these ones here that are unexplored we can go over to them and you can see giant set of binoculars and even our mouse turns to a set of binoculars. So if I was to right click there and it tells you that it's going to take 13 hours to scout the sector. So if I right click there what will happen is if they were able to get there in the turn they will run over there and they will start scouting it which you will see that's what this one's doing right now. Right, so this guy here is scouting it, burning hours. Once he scouts it, it will open up, unlock like this, and we'll see everything that is in there that needs to be seen. Okay, when you have somebody scouting, you can see here, once they have finished scouting, we can Job click done. on them, and they will unlock the area that they just scouted. So now we can see what's in there. And we can see what we've got to do, right? We could go and get some of these tools. We could get some candy bars. Now, you can see here that we have actually a quest here. So, when a, qu a quest pops up in our city, there are not many factions out there who are capable we of click on it, we activate it, whatever. It's going to tell us to do something, right? I'm not going to listen to that. We'd, uh, we can then send a specialist out to the world map to find that quest. Now, this one's obviously hidden, as you can see, but once we unhide it, we could then send this guy in to that quest, the same as we would do it with any of these other resources, right? We just move over it, right click onto the quest. Then once they get there, it'll pop up and something will happen, whatever it is. Just depends, all different quests do different things. Some will be fights, some will be something else and something will be something else. Now, as I said, if you're doing a quest, you can just get your specialist and do the same thing. Just right click on the quest area and it will trigger an event, which is part of the quest. All right, so I'm just going to close that just because I'm not doing the quest right now. Um, but that's what you do with that one. All right. So other things we can find on the map here are uh, this type of thing we can find um, bandits in a particular location here and what we can do is we can go and fight them so if we go and get a specialist and we highlight over the top of them you'll see it turns to a crosshair and if I was to right click she would run over there if she's got the moves and go and start a gunfight. Now, what you want to look at with this type of thing is obviously comparing your stats to the bandit stats. Now, the game itself is doing it for you here, so it can give it to you very quickly and you don't need to overanalyze this. But you can see it's got a balance of power there in the middle. We are on the left and the bandits are on the right and it's saying we're evenly matched and it's going to take two days and one hour of fighting now we are going to get damaged but because we're evenly matched there's a chance we'll win 
there's also a chance we'll lose. You can see that the bandit themselves, uh, what do they got? They got one damage, attack, uh, five health. Uh, what's that? Health? I guess that's per bandit. And there's one damage attack per bandit. And they've got a group health of 60 HP. Now we've got a, we've got an individual HP of 80 and attack of nine damage. Now, from my understanding, the 12 times on the face means that there is 12 bandits there. So in theory, they're actually doing, going to do 12 damage uh, in total. And, you know, they're gonna, well, uh, 12 fives, I'm guessing that's 60. So that's where the group health comes from. Now, we can, to make these fights even easier and less risky, is you can send multiple specialists to the same fight. So, if I was to right-click her there, and I had another specialist... Can't click on that one. But if I had another specialist over here, I could click them and send them into the battle as well. And then suddenly the balance of power will change entirely. Um, and I'll try and show that in a minute. Now the other type of bandit one comes up is this type here where the entire region is blocked out. It's totally red. You cannot do anything. You can't see anything. Yes. Now to do that, we have to do the same thing, but it's more like the, um, uh, what do you call it? The scouting here. Uh, it looks whole region. So we just have to click on here and we will go into a battle. But again, you've got the same stats. Um, exactly the same. You've got your balance of power. You've got your time that's going to take. You've got how many bandits there are, what type, and their HP, etc. So again, you can send in multiple specialists to fight this. And when you beat these, this region will then be unlocked. When you beat these guys, this little building will be unlocked and there might be some resources there. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of the battles here, right? So for instance, we've got this guy here, or these bandits, and you can see here we're evenly matched. So I'm gonna send her in to fight. So we're gonna right click on it. And you're going to see, they're going to pull guns out, and they're going to start fighting, okay? Okay, now, you can see that says evenly matched, two days, 12 hours, right? Now, we've got this second specialist, and I'm going to put him over, and you can see suddenly the balance of power changing. You see that yellow bar there? That is now sort of like it's shifting because of this new specialist coming in. And we're going to reduce the time down to one day and 12 hours. So if I right click, he's going to go over. He's going to get his gun and he's going to start fighting too. And we could send in multiple specialists. I don't know if there's a limit. There's a limit in probably more physical, as in fitting around. But you could probably easily fit four or five of them if you wanted to. And you'll just shorten that time and shorten the amount of damage you get. Alright, so that'll go on. So let's sort of zip through that. Alright, you can see here we've got Specialist Ready for Action and we've got Hostiles Defeated. Battle was won on the world map. So we can click on either and we'll get over here. And then we'll see this picture, right? We've obviously defeated him, he's collapsed. We click on one of our specialists Hold here to trigger the little pop-up. Just confirm that. And you'll see now it has unlocked this building uh, to have a basic clothing. So we can go now and scavenge that building to get the basic clothing. But we're not going to do that right now. But So basically those bandits were protecting some basic clothing in this building. We're going to look at the same thing over here. So again... We've got this balance of power again. Sort of evenly matched, but I'd say it's leaning on the not great side for us. Engaging hostile. 
So we run in and they'll just run straight in the center and start shooting. Yep. Now again, we can do exactly the same thing, but here we can just do it to the building here, but you can see it's now changed again to a different uh, balance of power. Engaging hostile. And we're gonna run in and go and fight. Okay, so now you can see all of this is red and blocked out. So we're gonna zip through again. All right, so again, we've won the battle. Same sort of look, same thing, everything else, no different whatsoever. And we click on one of our specialists. We won the battle. We won the battle. And suddenly, there we go, all of this opened up. And unfortunately, there's even more bandits here. It's just the never ending supply of bandits. But we've unlocked the region now, so we can now go and scavenge. So this guy could go over okay. here and go and uh, get this research. All right. She could run over okay. here and go and get these guns. All right, so to show you some more examples of these uh, these COG-based ones, you can see here in the other game we had research, which you can see there, and it says build a research outpost. Now, you also have various things like this where we have uh, these jackets, protective clothing, right? So here it says you've got to build a scavenger outpost. And same with that one. There's some rare metals and... You know, there's various other things. There's fun boxes. There's superior tools. Okay, and each one of these is giving you a statistic of what you can get if you put a scavenger outpost there. So in this case here, if we put a scavenger outpost here, you'll get one superior tool every 12 hours to automatically appear in your colony. This one here, you'll get one fun box every 12 hours appear in your colony. Um, protective clothing, one every 12 hours in your colony. Rare metals, we get six rare metals every 12 hours in a colony. And in this case here, where I have put a scavenger outpost, these two are in the same region. The scavenger outpost is actually collecting both. It's collecting six rare metals every 12 hours and one protective clothing every 12 hours. So bonus. When it comes to research, similar thing, but it's telling us we're gonna get 30 research points every 12 hours. So if you put a few around different areas, then you will get, you know, uh, you, you get constant research trickling in. Uh, it's still gonna be slow because they're not massive numbers, but you can see on this one here, I have 68 science production every 24 hours. And that's just based on having uh, some outposts around somewhere, like here. We have 16 and 18 every 12 hours, right? And then there might be more, I can't remember. Can't be bothered doing the math. But anyway, we have 68 every 24 hours coming in. So, you know, it's going to be slow to get that up. But there's plenty out here when you get into the, the game further and further, right? So you can put tons of them out there if you can afford it. And we'll talk about, out, we talk about outposts a little bit in the specialist guide. But we'll also talk about outposts in more detail again uh, in a separate outpost guide um, in the future. You can see here we've got some guns. So the other last uh, couple of things that we can do in the world map, which I've briefly discussed, and I discuss it in the specialist guide, and I will discuss it in a separate guide, is outposts. We have uh, a couple. We have a few different outposts. Okay, so we can make settlers. Which, yeah, I'm not going to go into here, but basically, you create a settler from a specialist. You then come out to the world map. Find what you want to do, whether it's scavenge, research, uh, various other uh, outposts, and you basically go into a region and build an outpost. Now, you're only allowed one outpost per region, so uh, just be careful with what you do, um, because even though you can demolish them, you 
do not get your settler or specialist back. So it's a very expensive uh, demolition, really. But yeah, you can put these down to gather the science points or uh, scavenge particular items, that sort of thing. The other type of outpost is these engineer outposts, which is part of the Project Tomorrow story. So again, you can only put one in each region and they cannot be in the same region as your standard outposts either. So that does, I mean, it doesn't cause complexity, but if you're somebody that likes to put an outpost everywhere and gather all resources, yeah, it could hinder you later and you may have to demolish some things to, to do things and get stuff around. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, we'll go through our posts a bit more detail, but there is a bit of information in the specialist one if you want to check that out as well. The other thing you'll discover out here, other than various things uh, like that, is uh, cars. You will find vehicles. Do we have one here for an example? Which you can utilize to speed up travel with your specialist. And again, we will go through a little bit about vehicles uh, in another another video, but I do talk about it a little bit in Specialist. Where the hell is a, a vehicle? Here's one. So here's a vehicle, right? So you can find them uh, in the map, right? You, you walk around and, and you might find a vehicle. When you unlock or scout an area, it might say, oh, vehicle found. And you go, great. Okay, then you can chuck your Specialist in there and you can take it back to the city if you want, to the colony. Um, but you will need a garage to actually reuse it once you've gone to the colony. Um, so keep that in mind. But we'll go through that in more detail in another guide. As I said, the other big one is to find other colonies, other civilizations, like we have here. So here's Mole Town. And you can see who is the, the leader of Mole Town. Bit of a backstory. You can build a reputation with them. So, you know, you can be unfriendly, friendly, whatever. It has a travel time, a population, all that sort of stuff. Now, this travel time comes into play with trades. Again, we'll do another guide on trades just to discuss that. And this has even popped up the trade window to show we can trade. Shows what resources they actually have. You can't do anything in the world map but with this town. Like, you don't just go in there or anything like that. It's just there. But you have to find them. So you can't trade with these civilizations or colonies until you actually find them, which is about you scouting the map. And they are scattered in different places. Some are close to you. Some are extremely far away. So, you know, there's another one here, right? This is Sin Town. Um, and well, where else have we got them? There's many more. Uh, that's us, obviously. All right, here's one that's not too far away. That's Dead Creek. They're pretty close to us. They got travel time of two days, 10 hours. Not too far away. And you can get them closer than that. We may have one closer, but I can't remember. Yeah, that one there. Lush Town. One day, 18 hours. I think that's probably the closest one. Okay, and if we do trades, that's how long it's going to take for a trade to travel to us. And then we can have ones that are extremely far away, like Junk Town here, which is a travel time of six days and seven hours. So you usually find the ones furthest away from you are the ones that have the good stuff. They have the stuff that's really hard to make and really expensive and generally what you want to buy um depending on what part of the where you are in the game mid game late game early game it all depends yeah it's just another part of the game that adds an extra level to it so you know while you've got your colony management here where you're managing buildings and stuff like this this is all about discovering further out into the world and getting resources and scavenging and, you know, finding civilizations and colonies to trade with uh, and all of that sort of good stuff and, you know, building outposts and, um, you know, here, getting a survivor outpost so that you can get um, survivors, find survivors automatically and then 
tell them to come back to the city. You know, all that sort of stuff. And we just do that over and over again through the entire map until we've unlocked all of the map and found all the stuff and collected everything. Um, now, for your colony's sake, especially if you're playing difficult level tiers and stuff like that, you may want to go and look for resources you actually need. So the only other thing to keep in mind with the world map is that it is not... Uh, um, it is resource limited, okay? Yes, you do have these cog ones, which are not limited, so they will... They're, they're basically endless. So if you build outposts in these areas, uh, obviously research or any of the scavenging ones, they are an endless supply. Uh, but all these other buildings that your specialists, these ones here, go and scavenge, they're a one-time event, basically. Once you've taken all of those, for instance, this one, 39 iodine pills, that building will then look like this building or this building. They are gone. Once you have scavenged, scouted and scavenged the entire map, that is it. There is no more. The only thing that is ever uh, endless is these um, ones that you get without posts. Otherwise, you need to make sure that you use the time while you're scavenging these items to build the stuff in your own colony to make these items and make them... Uh, not endless, but uh, as close to endless as possible, because there is a defined end to this. I mean, it would be a long way away, but even inside the colony is not an endless supply of materials. You could, in theory, run out of plastic, metal, and everything else eventually. Now, maybe you could keep going with trading, but you will eventually run out. Now, it could be uh, a very very long game but it could happen uh, i haven't got there but i've never tried to be honest so just keep that in mind right it's not an endless supply out here you will run out of things to do in the world map and um you know when you get to the late game you know watch you can watch some of my let's plays and see the end game and see that i have unlocked the entire world map and basically stripped it bare other than um, like I said, the outpost items. All right, so there you go. That is a bit of a a guide on the world map uh, from my perspective anyway. Um, hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully it's given you some insight if you have struggled with anything or you're new to the game and you want to quickly get to know some of these items to get fast into the game. Um, if you like the channel and you want to support it further, check the description below. There's a link to a Patreon site and a link to a virtual coffee site. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out immensely, and I really do appreciate the support. Most importantly, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of the guide. Let me know what you think of the game, anything else like that. Uh, if I forgot anything or I wasn't clear about anything, please put it in the comments. I will look at uh, providing more information about any of that and if we need to do follow-up videos we will do that otherwise i'll just answer comments uh, in the comments and um, hopefully get things resolved if i made any mistakes or any information is incorrect please tell me that as well because i'm happy to be corrected as well and learn from everybody else so uh, hopefully there's been a lot of information in here and you know happy to have you let me know in the comments whether you like these guides whether you want to see more of them or you don't want to see them anymore because you think they're rubbish or whatever else let me know i read all the comments and answer every comment that warrants an answer as soon as i possibly can hopefully you've enjoyed the video thanks for watching and i will catch you in the next one